You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Power After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Power After Show. <laughs> No music? All right, well, whatever. Good <laughs> afternoon, good morning, good evening, After Buzzers, and welcome to the sixth week episode entitled Who You With of Star's Original Series, Power. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey, and joining me today is Erica J. Green, Robin Ayers. Bam Erickson. And we have been blessed to have, two weeks in a row, another special guest. And you guys are not going to imagine who this is. This guy is playing an integral role in this season, this <laughs> first, first initiative season, initial season of Star's Power. His name is Venetius... Machado, aka Vinny, if you want to call him Vinny and keep a hood with that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Venetius Machado is in the house. How you doing, Vinny? Yo, how you guys doing, man? Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yeah, we are man. glad you're here. He plays the role of Nomar That's yes. right. on the show. He is the CI, aka Confidential Informant. Yes, sir. For Angela and her team. And your role right now, you're actually starting to get, uh, I don't want to say you, but no more, because we got to keep this thing separate, because <laughs> Venetius and no more are two different people. Venetius is delicious, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> no more is a little weird, but, you know, just keeping it real. Yo, you know what's crazy? If you guys can, when you guys tune in, and you guys are just listening right now on podcast, when you guys go to YouTube and you actually watch this and you see this guy, you got to... Check out his whole vibe. You'll see how he's dressed. He looked like he just stopped off, just got, just just flew in in the clear port, you know, off the private jet from yes. fifty thousand high, and flew in from Miami and was like, I gotta go do this interview real quick and yeah. after Buzz TV. You know what I'm saying? It looks nothing like the character. I'm like just so impressed. This dude's an actor. I was telling him and his beautiful sister over here that this dude is an actor, for real. And he's working on some projects uh, that is also going to like showcase his talent and where he's at. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. But we want to jump into this episode because we want to know what he thinks about some of the things that happened in this episode Man. as well. There was a lot of hot stuff lot. going on, yeah. you know, from Ghost and this whole thing with Angela that he has going on. First of all, let's, let's talk oh. about that. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about Ghost and Angela and how he's... The, the steam is getting hotter. And yeah. Bam has something to say. <laughs> yes. we'll, 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 and then Vinny we'll has something to say. Go. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Bam, go okay, ahead. Okay, Ghost, this, this relationship between Ghost and Angela, Jamie, Angela, is really starting to now turn me off. He's becoming so PW. Thank you. He's becoming so PW. Catch it, adults. You know what that means. He's... Oops. He's so he's so whipped now that he's clouding his judgment on everything else. And to me, I don't like their relationship anymore because you when you are going to step out, you can't totally you can't like neglect your wife. Um, the way that he's neglecting her when she was up performing the song mm -hmm. at the club You're gonna you're gonna hide behind uh, the character uh, that Lala Anthony plays to answer the text Then you're gonna leave the club to go answer a phone <laughs> like you breaking you breaking if there's rules you're breaking the The cheating the code, side yeah. rules. Yeah, but let me let me just jump in real quick because remember guys I'm the one who said I was all for yes, you are yeah I was <laughs> I was feeling their relationship But I mentioned that the reason I don't like their relationship anymore is because now they're both making a decision They know about each other's <laughs> Like other uh, lives, other yeah, lives, other life. yeah. But see, before it was like he didn't know about her, she didn't know about his. So I was like, oh, it's more fantasy. No, but he more... knew he was married. Yeah, well, he didn't know that she had an know, other. But... She didn't know that he had an. Well, other, they both so came clean at the same time. I, that. And I get yeah. that. But what I'm saying is, I was digging it a little bit more when it was like fantasy and just a little bit more romantic. But now it's just straight up disrespectful. I mean, like, I'll, but you I'll, know, I'll, you know, it's so interesting. Like, say about this. Yes. <laughs> because this is a man who's living, you know, with a lot of pain and regret. 
Yeah. You know, he regrets the decisions that he's made. And so he's at a point right now where he's starting to look back, you know, and I think he's at a pivotal moment where, you know, he's already made his decision. It's already made, you know, and so now is solidifying the idea of the past that he never had, mm -hmm. you know, so and that's the interesting thing about the streets, you know, because Ghost's character in a way emulates what, you know, the street life is all about. Right. Yeah. You know, you can't you, you, you can't expect anything because you just don't know. And it's interesting because his relationship with Angela is it goes hand in hand with his relationship with Tommy. But on the reverse, mm. if, if you catch that, you wow, know, yeah, yeah. because, mm. you know, the way it's developing, and I don't want to give anything away, yeah. but, you know, it's almost like black and white, you know, night and day. And, and he's caught in the middle. And it's kind of like resemblance of what he is going through internally, you know, him himself. And he's getting himself to the point now where he's going to say, okay, I'm going to make a decision I'm going to be able to live with now. And the choices that, you know, the consequences, therefore, wherever they be, I'm going to be able to live with. And I think that's, that's where he's at, you know, down at the end of the day, he's a man who, who can't live with the decisions that he's made. Right. And so he's stuck in a situation. So Angela, in a sense, is, you know, because everything there <clears throat> is um, kind of like, you know, masqueraded over the facade of what the idea was, because, you know, it could have been, you know, anybody else in a sense, but, you know, Angela just solidifies that for him. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it, it, you know, encourages him to go ahead and pursue that which we, he never had. So, But thing. why continue to make bad decision after bad decision? It's like, why are you stringing along the woman who's been by your side? Who's been like the down <laughs> chick, if I can say that? You know, I've blinked my own self out. Oh, Lord, I'm on the woman's side. I, let, me, I, let me turn back over. Because <laughs> y'all about to go in, I feel no, it. I'm, no, I'm not going in, but like, I was getting a little heated. I'm watching and I'm just like, you're out in public, still just being disrespectful what if your kid walked by you know that i see it from just not yeah. only the wife but the kids the, and everything the kid's not gonna walk by because the kids don't walk <laughs> what the, you know what i mean the kids what if your family sees that other people you know you're making the tasha look stupid yes i'm gonna be for the woman yeah. cycle but, but in, a, in addition to that though erica i feel like it's still wrong yes we, I, i'll say it again still wrong but at least do your wife equally or better than the than the mistress he's he's dogging tasha out right now dogging. he's dogging her out so let me ask you a question what makes it what makes it wrong what makes the tasha the, the, and the, ghost no no or? the angela and ghost just to get a different perspective from you know what well, makes it wrong originally i said that I, I i sort of liked it i was sort of pro their relationship because it was like it was a long lost love it wasn't like he just met her off of the you know street or something right. but now i feel like because he's divulged all his information she knows he's married he knows that she had a boyfriend i know that he's gone now but um they're no longer together that's what i mean but um the fact like they just had this scene where they were in bed together and she said i don't want you to go like that's just right. rude now you're getting rude and disrespectful that's what i'm sure. saying selfish I, yeah i mean even you know from the beginning it's you know morally wrong you know because he's married right you know right from the get-go but you know um encompassing the fact that you know this is what you know everybody's relationship is kind of on a show you know you know it, it, it i think people have an idea you know that is like black and white but we mm -hmm. live in a world that is full of colors yes and so it's difficult because you have emotions and you have you know life and circumstances and conditions and then you live with like pain and regret like and i think that that's what motivates ghost right you know his character a lot and so um you know for him and that's the <clears throat> thing it's like for him is right yeah you know what i'm saying i mean even though it's like morally wrong and all that and you know i agree with you know the morally yeah. wrong statement but you know for him it is the right thing to do because now he's going to be able to get to a future that he always wanted to have it's so funny it's so funny you mentioned that because uh last week notori you know said something about uh life is full circle and i, right. I always say look once you leave something in the past you move forward and right. don't go back. Right. And she says, well, sometimes life works where things come around full circle, and that's a very true statement as well. Yes. But I also find that it's very interesting that it's inevitable, of course, that the truth is starting to catch up with him. He goes with her dad, goes with her to see see his dad, to see her dad, right. who was dad, sick yeah. in the convalescent mm -hmm. home. Right. And she's like, he looks familiar. Who is that? Oh, that's the kid that used to hang out in the corner, yeah. the, drug the drug dealer. dealer right. right. So now he has this look on his face like, the truth is bearing down on me right. kind of thing, and it's only a matter of time. Plus, she's been listening to the audio tapes. 
right? So she listens to the audio tapes, mm -hmm. and she doesn't know. She's he's Jamie as far as yeah, she right, she's right. concerned. She, does. she doesn't know yeah. about this alter ego no. ghost. Yeah. And so now she's familiar with the term or name ghost. ghost. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a matter of time before it's like do 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 do. Like the crosshairs are gonna be on him, and I'm just curious to see how she's going to handle that. And, and, and the writers have been so clever as to set her up in a situation where this woman has no life. Like, she has no life. <laughs> right. Like, her whole life revolves around her career strategy yep. and mm -hmm. surviving and getting away from and making a better life for herself and her family. Like, she has a relationship from, with her family that's right. not really estranged, but she's not really tight with them because she's so involved with work yes. right so if you look at that dynamic you i think you might find her in a position where if she had a normal social life she might not dive in with this jamie situation like she's yeah. gonna yeah. i think she's gonna be forced to do because she has nothing else like you seeing her taking herself out of character mm -hmm. like i want you to stay over mm -hmm. that's not something that i really feel angela would do if she had a normal Life, she was saying but she life. doesn't yeah. have a normal, yeah. normal life. She doesn't. She's not. She felt alone even when she was with Greg. Greg was right. just somebody to keep her warm, mm -hmm. right? And right. in bed, and, and like, it was easy because they worked together. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. So I kind of I empathize with her, um, even though you know we know it's wrong, you know morally or whatever. Um, at the same time, when he's telling her things like, "I'm alone," yeah. Also, she said, "You're there with all those people." And I'm here, right. alone. But and he says I'm alone too. Mm -hmm. And and that and now let me jump back on his side. He is alone because he feels you know you got Tasha and Tommy who just don't get they don't understand where he's going his goals they don't get where he's going and so the two people that are closest to him aren't really vibing with him so therefore he does feel alone he feels like I there's agree. no one that he can trust it there's no one that he can talk to so he is alone in the aspect of that you have celebrities all the time where they're around a lot of people but they're still alone right but i get that but why string tasha along with, with the game at the end of what well, i do want to make mention he did tell um what? andy it won't always be like this so it's like he has his own plan on the side but you're not trying to include i don't feel like it's including tasha or tommy like you said they're not no, it's seeing not. it now but is he exactly. really is he really stringing her alone she i mean she seemed a little bit oblivious about that he was cheating which i thought you know women we kind of know these kind of things but she was really like surprised whenever it was brought up by the driver i can't think of his character's name sean. right now yeah sean's um character when he um mentioned that to her she act really surprised like really he's stepping out on me so i don't know like seems like she still thinks he's in this he he comes home to her kissing her and stuff like that acting like he is still in this but all the time you have this alternative Motive. But here's the I, I think she. I think life. she. She. She knows, but she doesn't want to know. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah when we, we. Yeah. Do we do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. Also, with that, she knows him well enough to know that it's really not all about a woman. A woman might be involved, but it's much deeper than that. It because is because he is making a total life choice that he's including her on. Exactly. It's not like. Everything even revolves around Angela. It's about a complete package of a life that he wants to live. Right. Well, see, and she just fits into that I plan. Agree. It's not all about Angela. It's but like, that's right now because they don't know the truth about each other either. So, you know, the, the careers might, you know, change things right. as well once they know. But, you know, it's all spiraling down. So yeah. we'll see what we're happens. About that. Right. <laughs> well, see, the point that I wanted to make is that this is the very first time. Well, remember she saw um, Ghost in... Angela talking in the club a couple of episodes ago. Remember right. when mm -hmm. they first came together? That's mm -hmm. the only time that she ever saw him with another woman that maybe had some. She had some sort of inkling about. But it was. I don't think it's ever been about her um, thinking that he's cheating. Even now, even when Sean told her he puts other things before you or he has other priorities. However, whatever he said right. in, the, in the end, whenever mm -hmm. whatever yeah, he said. What do I know? I'm just a driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That scene right there. She. The way he made it seem, we know that he's saying that there's another woman, but she doesn't necessarily know. She's sort of like, what does that mean? Yeah, there's, There is something that he's not telling me. There's something that you know that I don't, but mm -hmm. I don't think at the top of her head she's thinking it's another woman. No, yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and maybe to her, it's more than just that, because the idea of a woman, you know, a, a, as a, a one night stand, you know, she could live with, but is the idea of, you know, bringing down the empire that the they empire. built, and that's what she's after. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what she, you know, and, and which into. brings the point that when he when he mentioned to Angie that he's lonely, he is. He is. Because every Tommy. Tasha, his life, everybody thinks he's one way, but he's not. He's yeah. To, <laughs> he's a punk with him. To Angie, <laughs> what? sorry, I meant to, to Tasha, to Tasha, yeah. to Tommy, and all of that. Right. All of them, he's he's ghost, mm -hmm. but he's Jamie. Jamie, and he is time. lonely because yeah. no one knows that side of him. Right. So I think he is. He was talking talking the truth right there. Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. Well, talking about Tommy, I mean Tommy. Tommy, you know, finds I love Tommy, out. Man. Yeah, Tommy. Uh, Tommy is the man. Tommy. Love Tommy. <laughs> right. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy is. And uh, another shout out to Joseph because he's playing Joe, that role. That's man. my boy. Yeah, he's playing that. He's doing his thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's a beast at the gym, man. Is he? Yo, yeah. We worked out a few times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's a beast. He's man. pretty fit. He was sitting on the edge of the bed. I was like, okay, he got a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said somebody works out a little bit. You know, he used to be a boxer. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, okay. he did professional boxing. So. I'm glad you told me that because yeah. when we talked to him, we could ask him about. You <laughs> That's know. right. Yeah, yeah right. So. I can see that with the intensity. Like in every scene, it's like intense. He's bringing it like it's an opponent. Yeah, yes, yes, is, he I, does. Love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. He's very, he's, he's aggressive, super yeah. intense. Right. But speaking super of super nice guy, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, That's, I mean, that's that's great. He's he's a really yeah. nice guy, but then he brings <laughs> this level of intensity to the character that's like, yo, this dude's a ticking time bomb. You never know what's gonna happen with Tommy, right? Tommy is. Just like you're waiting, you feel like he's like the hugest pit bull in the world, right? And Ghost is the only person like that can like tame him, yeah, kind of thing. But I really like how he found out that Ghost was in Forest Hills. I love right, right. He's sitting there like it's 1956 having a milkshake on the corner with, with Angela. With Angela. Like, I swear they get into these moments where like oh nothing God. else exists. Like they're in La La Land and they're just floating around on the cloud. And then Tommy had to come in there and like just yeah. break the whole thing up. It's like, that was oh, brilliant, man. I love that. Love, love that. love that scene. The way yeah. Tommy the way Tommy came in there <laughs> and the way his whole disposition changed. He and, and to see the response of how Ghost couldn't say anything but mm -hmm. how he was pissed. Like Tommy's characters, he really knows how to get under mm -hmm. Ghost, uh, yeah. uh, Ghost skin or say certain things when he knows that Ghost can't re re and when Ghost can't say anything. Can't uh -huh. say anything. That whole scene, I, I just you know, I thought Tommy's performance in uh, in this past episode, I thought was just really brilliant because yeah. he really acted his ass off in the sense of being able to, to play the ass then you know playing the angry like there were so many emotions that he conveyed all in just one episode Gosh, yeah. he yeah. was well, yeah, remember their all best, in one scene yeah, all yeah. in one scene yeah. and, and he you know it's funny is because you know that's his best friend so he knows right. how to get under his skin <laughs> secondly there's a level of betrayal that he feels that's right absolutely yeah. which is why even though when he confronted uh when he confronted Ghost in the room and he threw all the tough stuff off the table yes. yeah. you would really think that because Ghost is pissed Right. Ghost is like, this dude's gonna come in here and screw this up mm -hmm. and, you know, bring everything that I really care about down on <laughs> me. And Tommy's pissed. Right. Tommy's already pissed. So Tommy is like, you know, Tasha, he says, is like his sister. Yeah. And like, we came up together, all the success we have, he associates with Ghost and, and Tasha. Tasha as everything, as the three of them as a package deal, right? right? And now they're married, they have kids and blah, 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 and we're doing great. And now you wanna. <clears throat> the girl who left your heart in a dumpster type of deal, and you want to bring this situation, like, what are you doing? We already had that experience. We already had that experience. We're going to go through this right? again, right? And he had to check Ghost, and Ghost actually was mad, and then Ghost had to, yeah. you saw Ghost dwindle. His yeah. energy dwindled because Tommy really got in him, got and was speaking, was spitting real to him, like, yes. dude, this girl left your heart in the dumpster. What are you doing? Tasha's like my sister, like, blah, blah, blah. And we have all this. You're gonna have Tasha's gonna bring all this shit down. Right. And excuse my French, but that's yeah. what he said. And after all this time, you know where has she been? And I've been the one who's been here helping you build this thing. Right. And all of a sudden, you're just turning on me like that. Right. Like, like yeah. you know. Loyalty. And I liked how Ghost. I liked how Go when Ghost came at him, Tommy had to remind him, oh, "Wait a minute." I can't be in your business. You was in my business, That's right? Like, That's you right. was in my business last, you know, the other night about about Holly. the Bahali. 
So let's talk but about he, Holly. No. <laughs> let me can, let me make a, let me make a quick point. Just notice that Tommy has tried. He has had to remind Ghost a couple of different times. Listen, mm-hmm. we are equal. You are not my father. You are not my big you know brother. He's, That's right. So he said. Mm-hmm. Remember the last time he said um, when Ghost was trying to. Um, when he when he brought uh, Holly over to the house, and he was like, "Wait a minute! First of all, don't talk to me like that." You know what I mean? So he had to say, "She's just as she's just as much my employee as she is yours. Mm-hmm. We're like equal. We're 50 50 partners right. in this." Right. And then on this past episode, he said. This past episode, he said, oh, that's funny because you were all up in my business last, you know, mm-hmm. the other day mm-hmm. or whatever." So the I'll point, yeah, the point is that he's trying to let Ghost know. Listen, he, we're equal here. Th- but he was wrong to bring that girl over to the house. Of course, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm yeah. not saying that he wasn't. Who was wrong, wrong to bring the girl over to the house? Tommy was wrong Tommy. to bring that girl. To bring Holly over? Yeah. That's his girl. Right. That's, that's his, his girl. Thing. He likes her. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she did. Okay. She, no. t- talking about that, she did steal something. Thank you very much. And I said <laughs> that last did. week. Yeah, I said did. that last week. I was like. Maybe she was looking at her like, maybe Tasha was looking at her like that because she's the kind of chick that would come in and snatch something right off of the countertop. I, and you're like, no, I don't think that you guys were like, no, I don't think that she was doing anything. She came, and sure enough, she's wearing a hoop, the diamond hoop earrings. Yeah. I'm like, see, she stole something. That's what I thought about when she said she was going to the bathroom. I'm like, she about to steal something. Yeah. And then it caused Tommy to have to lie to Tasha to be able to cover Exactly. Yeah, right. so he was in a precarious situation. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Which is why he should have never brought her ass over to the house because when. I mean, look at the house. I would never, I would never bring, if that is, if that was your house and there was just a girl that I recently just met, I'm not going to bring this chick over to your house when you living in this big old deluxe apartment. But that shows yeah, you, you how would. he feels no, about I Yeah, you would. No, I would. Yeah, you would. Let me tell you why, Bam. Let me tell you why you would, Bam Erickson. <laughs> You would. Let me tell you why, Bam Erickson. You would because you're very picky about the women that you like. And as soon as you finally find a woman that you actually like. Okay, okay. And you cool with her and you're like, dang, we got this thing. There's this one girl. I, I mess with her. That's how it is. And, the you, and then you guys, and they hook up, and everything is cracking. <laughs> and it just and they're in the bar, and he beats a dude's butt over it, <laughs> and it's like, oh, she's turned on by that. They, they have a very, very, very peculiar taste, both of them. Yes, and they the do. And the fact that they're they, they like click. each other, they click. They click. When you're yeah. a peculiar person, and you find somebody else that's just your type of peculiar. You bring them to the homie's house. That's it. Check I'm yeah. messing with. You gotta I do that. For problems. You're right, but I still don't like her. Can someone please tell me? I was I was trying to figure this out. I was asking Robin if anyone knows why did she wear the earrings to Tasha's party? What was there a, a, a reason for that? Was it like, look, I have your shit. You maybe, know, I have your maybe, stuff. No, maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't know it was uh, Tasha's no, party. She, she knew it was Tasha's party. Oh, she she said I got called in for Santos called me in for Tasha's party. Santos. So, Cantos mm-hmm. called me in for Tasha's party. <laughs> so she knew, so why did she wear them? Is she just I, I really that she, crazy? Is that what they were trying to point out? That she's, she's really off mm-hmm. the She's wall. a chameleon. Yeah. She knows how to change her colors, you yeah. know, and I think she's planting seeds here and there for a purpose. That's and I think I you're going to see it developed a little bit more in the future tra- episodes. Yeah, when she tried to say, Tommy, pay for these, I was kind of like, whoa, whoa, is she trying to she say knows that what Tommy she's doing. took? But like, she, I didn't know where she was trying to go and, with but, it. But also remember, she knows that Ghost is screwing some other woman. So she, I think she wore the earrings because she didn't, first of all, she didn't give a damn. And if Tasha was to say something to her, she has something against Tasha to say, well, yeah, I stole earrings, or maybe I didn't steal earrings because I know your man. You know what I'm saying? Like she has weight. Maybe. Nah, I don't maybe. think so. She's just, know, a, think. she's just a petty thief, like she said in the car. Right. Well, she, she just has a. She's she a crazy. Him. She's a crazy thief. She's a klepto. That's she it. She told Tommy, I didn't think she would miss him. I think it would literally. It was just that simple. Right. I didn't think she would miss him. Because she I'm, saw all. She yeah, said he shared closets like yeah. a department store. Yeah. I think there's more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That one thing just made me feel like. All right, well, no, that's, that's, that's the Venetians coming out. Damn. I think there's no, more. That's the delicious. Yes. <laughs> that's the delicious. I can't. You ain't going to see no grown man saying delicious. <laughs> there ain't no grown ass man going to say delicious. No, <laughs> you have to stay tuned and watch stay out. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We are. Yes. Yeah, we but are. That, her, her closet is a department store, but you got to remember, she doesn't know that Tosh. She doesn't know their background. So, when you come from nothing and now you've got all this, I bet you she can run an inventory. Tasha yeah. can run an inventory in her mind of everything that's I'm in that sure. closet. Yes, she can. Because yes, she can. she's that kind she's smart with numbers. Yes. She knows she just knows like line items. She yes. knows just like, okay, I got this with this, this with this. Especially women that like to dress, they yeah. know their closet. Yeah. You I know from experience. And she's overprotective. 
Yeah. Mm. So, you know, she's aware. She's got everything, you know, pinned down. Right. Yeah, she, she's aware of everything. And plus, yeah. yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, you know, that's the type of per- the character that she is, mm-hmm. you know, so she wouldn't know for sure. So if something goes missing, and that's why, you know, she was right on it. So let's talk about Tommy and Holly again really quick. I need to I need to <laughs> it, bring up a special point about that. Yeah, because. Yeah, go ahead. I'll okay. bring one up, too. Yeah, well, go ahead. I, would, I would love would to you hear what you want to talk about the money. You want to talk no, about the money? I don't want to talk, about, want to talk about. about the fact that he told her the Ugh. business. Go said, don't dumb. tell her. He said, this isn't uh, my first radio, dumb. my first rodeo. But he told her the business. That was and dumb. He's dumb. PW. Dumb. But listen, but listen. <laughs> remember last week. <laughs> remember last week. He said, or I said, my part of my prediction was the fact that I think Tommy is going to try to build with Holly, sort of what Ghost has with Tasha, and it's almost out of spite. I think at this point. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Holly's the right chick, though. Like, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's out of spite. I just think naturally, as you mature, and you know, like he said, he's at the top of the food chain. Mm-hmm. He's got you know a team of guys working for him. I think yes. it's natural that he. There's just something about this one particular girl because. Tommy is all about the grind and the hustle. He's I agree not with he's that. not a he's not a, a hound, a pee hound as right. you call it. So you he's not running his, around trying to screw every it's girl. It's genuine. His, right. his, his, his genuine. reaction to, to Holly is very genuine. So yes. I agree with that point. But the reason I said what I did is because again, I brought back those two those two points where how he had to check Ghost. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm not I'm your equal here. So it's almost like Ghost has been, I don't know, coming at Tommy a certain kind of way, like a um um like an underling. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I think he's sort of trying to prove himself. Like, listen, you could run around here doing what you do. You can go and sleep with other girls, and you know what I'm saying. Right. But, but to tell her the business, that's I mean, that's rule one. Well, here's like, the thing. Really? I, th- I well, think he just broke everything right there. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, I don't need. I don't need, I don't think that he knows what he's gotten himself no, into. He you know, yeah. he's lost and fascinated that's over her, it. and he's caught up in that. But it, you know, it's so interesting that. Holly has been the only one who's been able to get Tommy to do things without him actually willingly wanting to do it. Right. Yeah. You know, That's an everybody point. else. Yeah, because Ghost hasn't been able to control him that way, but Holly does. Yes. You know, by his naiveness, by his fascination mm-hmm. over her, you know, he just he loses control in that sense. And she's just been like, been able to spin him around, twi- you know, twist him, turn him upside down, and do whatever she wants with him, you know, so she's playing. And so that's why, you know, I'm saying that, you know, there's a lot more than just. You know, just you know, naturally getting involved with this guy. You know, she has a plan. And was I'm glad that's a good point that you made because it was so evident about how she went off about, about the money. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, well, all of a sudden, if, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, it's a problem, Matt. Right. Your dude is loaded. <laughs> yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Never seen that before in my life. Right. First right. time ever. <laughs> Damn, on national TV. <laughs> a woman got a problem with bricks of money laying around the house. Okay. <laughs> So that she's like, was I'm like, what? I, 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 was, I was like dumbfounded on that scene. I was like, are you serious? I'm like, you can go. It's because he lied. I got money. Well, it's not about. Oh, it's see, not no, like, no. See, both. that's the thing. That's the thing that Vinny was talking about. It's about her angle. It's bigger than that. She already knew he had money mm-hmm. because she knows he's a part, her own part owner of the club, right? So yeah, she knows she's he's got money. Right. It's not like a low end club. It's a high end club. club. So obviously he's got more money than her, even mm-hmm. if he's just a club owner. So if he has bricks and money laying around the house, the average basic B would be like, oh, of course he's got money. You know, <laughs> okay. he owns a club. Right. You right. know, he got money, whatever. Right. No. But she's angling for something grander. Of whatever, and I think that she will do whatever it takes to use Tommy to her interest. Even that, I don't think she would. Be, I don't think she would want to discard Tommy, but I think it's to her interest as well. I think ultimately she would be like, okay, you're a boss too. Just like just as Ghost is strutting around in these suits and showing and telling people blah 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 blah. Which is another thing. A side note: I feel Ghost is feeling himself because he gets to put a suit on every day and all this other kind of stuff. And he tells Tommy to handle stuff in the street mm-hmm. and right. yada yada yada. And that's why Tommy has to remind him. But going exactly. back to Holly, Holly is is angling to position Tommy. Just a thought, though. She's been watching stuff. She's she been paying she attention. She mentioned to Tommy that she saw a ghost of somebody else. Right. Yeah. So, you know, she's, she, she's eyeing everything. Right. She's becoming aware of everything. So she's collecting her data and building right. a case for herself. And you now know? she's, and, yeah. And, and Tommy will be just another tool that she'll use to be able to get what she wants, you know? Hmm. So I think she will discard him if it came to that point. If it came to that. If it came yeah. to that, yeah. But yeah. I had a thought. Could she be working for someone? 
to try to bring them down. I don't know. I just I don't know why that came past my mind. It's like she's kind of just doing all this kind of random stuff just to like to help Tommy or bring him down. I don't understand. Like, I thought about that too, but she, I don't think could she. Could she? Just I thought, like I, I thought about bit. that, but I, mean, I was I like, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she's working for somebody. I mean, you have these random um, chicks that are in here dominating. You have the one that's killing people. The, the reason why I would say no, she's not, is because it's not like it's just she. Just know, yeah. but she's. It's not like she was the one who was actively trying to get into the circle. Look how many times uh, Tommy had to come after her. Right. So, so pretty chick in a club. You get hollered at yeah. all the time. Like that's. I mean, yeah. I'm she sure she knew how to first. angle herself. Put myself right in the club. T Tommy will see me. Okay, he's if gonna she, try to holler. If she is working for saying. somebody, she she saw the opportunity. Right. And then she, you know, she's a petty thief, so yes. she's just reacting and going along with mm -hmm. it. You know, so she's having fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a day in the playground for her. I, for one, am shocked that she didn't take one of those bricks. Me too. That's I thought that was that was shocking. Like, <laughs> I said I like to take stuff. I'm kind of shocked. <laughs> I thought she was going to try to shove it down the <laughs> She's preparing herself. She probably prepared. is preparing herself. Her clothes are too tight. What is she going to stack that? It was like right. saran wrap tight. She gonna have to, like, what's she going to hey, go with that? Hey, he was chilling on the bed. You never know. She but, could, you know. But here's the thing. I think a lot of things, like, a lot of times, <sighs> a lot of times, <laughs> or sometimes from what I've heard, Ladies can project drama Watch to it. try to pull drama. strings, <laughs> to pull strings of the gentlemen and to, you know, disorient them. I think a lot of these dramatics that she's doing is to disorient Tommy and just to, like we said, it's like to to gain some kind of control. And just she found, you know, just like he said, he's like you you have access to the money, you know, mm -hmm. you you know you can use whatever you want. He's not a extravagant guy. Yeah. He's real simple. Dude, you know, yeah. he drives an old muscle car. He wears plain clothes. He doesn't, you know. And he's straightforward with he's her. He's straightforward, yeah. exactly. She's so plain she to can, manipulation, like right. really great. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you what's so brilliant about this, though. The, the reason why I love this show, and, and power is the perfect name for it, because mm -hmm. power in every single situation, there's, right. a, there's a power. Listen, she's working with her power. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you see her what power I'm saying? Struggle, like, she's like, got right. the power of the, the, you know. She should put her, a tattoo her. right down there. She's got some power. There are little seeds everywhere. Seeds of power. That's, you know. Right, a right. brilliant name for the show. Speaking of power, um, I think the fans have the power because the fans are the ones who go to iTunes and they download, <laughs> they rate, subscribe, and they um, allow us to be in this building. So we want to thank you guys for always uh, tuning into iTunes. Make sure that yeah. you download, go to iTunes. We have all uh, various shows and different genres on After Buzz TV for After Buzz TV. So make sure that you guys go to iTunes. Make sure you download, you rate, subscribe, and you comment, and you please tell a friend. And if you guys want to call in and put in your two cents or ask any questions or correct us on something because we watch the show just like you guys, sometimes we get things wrong, you guys can give us a call, 424-256-1729, 424-256-1729. So. No more. No let's talk more. about, well, hold on, let's talk no about. No more. We're, we're, yeah, segue from Tommy. So Tommy goes to visit Ruiz. Right. Right. So they can figure out what's going on, uh, who's hitting them and whatever or whatnot. I love yeah. how... Uh, how uh, Tommy, I'm sorry, Ruiz had the gun under the blanket, oh, and yeah, he starts yeah. to raise, he sees a razor, I'm like, uh, he's got that in the area, right? Like, yeah, it's pointing. It's right, pointing. He's pointing. ready. It's, yeah, he's yeah. ready, right? <laughs> and then, you know, Nomar, sitting there eating the, the cold pizza, the pizza, <laughs> whatever, on the couch. I love the way he has strategically managed himself into this operation. And he's been placed, he's been put in a rock and a hard place, but you know, he came up with the snake in the bucket. Right. You know, he's, excuse me, become, he's used his wit. So you've seen this guy actually show that he has some intelligence as opposed to, you know, he's Angela and Greg him. treating him just like yeah. a Bully regular, him, yeah. you know, he's actually had to like, okay. Put himself in a situation that is deep and intense yeah. right. and, and critical, you know, exactly. life-threatening for himself. Yeah, yes. like I called it like the death walk. Right. You know? Right. So, because he's literally, you know, he's you see him right there, you know, l trying to listen in and, yeah. you know, but he's like right there where the distributor is and, and the, his boss is, you yep. know, and everything could come down in that one second hmm. as that door opens. But you know, he's having to put himself there because he's coerced to, you know. But yeah. at the same time, he has to diffuse that whole situation and try to, you know, just ease on by and, you know, not make a scene out of it I thought and you, get the information oh, that he has to. I thought you played that scene so mm. smooth. 
you thank you 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 know you knew at some point you had to to make a move so you smooth you get a wait first of all i don't know if this is a new york thing why is why why is everyone wearing coats inside the house is that a, is that a east coast thing oh yeah it's Probably, a east coast yeah. it's cold yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cold yeah. It, <laughs> but and I mean, it's about style I mean, as well. Everybody so. is wearing jackets and, and like heavy jackets. Oh, you, I don't. That was just. If one you of, see anybody walking down the street in New York with a tank top, they're on something. I know, but when you get inside the house, you're supposed to take your coat off, especially <laughs> and especially in this kind of environment when you got cats with guns and stuff. I would think you would take your coats off because it could be. No, a, that's where they hide. That's it. No, no, it. Here's the interesting thing it. about that because I, I was living in New York while shooting Power, mm -hmm. and most of the buildings there they mm -hmm. have the heaters and air conditioners uh, in control by the management and the building themselves mm -hmm. so they don't they don't come on it's not like when the west coast here where you have like portable air conditioners or heaters that mm -hmm. you control yourself it's controlled wow. by the building so mm -hmm. a lot of times when you got like 14 inches of snow outside it's freezing cold inside because they're not turning on the heater right now wow. it's not the time of day for them to do that for whatever what? the regulations and you know requirements that they have within themselves for doing it that way Get so a lot of times yeah wow. serious. so a lot of times inside depending on the building that you're in where you live you don't have access and control of that, so you gotta wear a, a sweater and a hoodie and a jacket inside to keep yourself warm. So I did that's not crazy. know that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a cool fact. Let me tell you. Well, what, no pun intended. Let me tell you <laughs> why I love the role that you play. Well, first of all, you seem in real life completely different, different. than Omar. Thank you. So that tells me. I you hope are so. Really. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. <laughs> That tells me that you are really, really, really going in with this character. Like, you were really, truly acting. Because that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask you. Like, is that a little bit of who you are? Was it, is it difficult to play that role? So you I, Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it, I, I'm, the way I wanted to approach Nomar was awkward, first and foremost, you know, for the situation there. But, you know, normal at the same time, because he's a human being, you know, like everybody else. And there's an interesting fact, because, like, everybody kind of pinpoints him as, like, you know, the addicted, you know, bad guy in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. because of his, you know, pedophilia addiction and all that. But if you look at, you know, every other character in the show, they're all going through different addictions themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's because of the fact that Nomar gets pointed out, you know, by Angela and all that, that he kind of stands out on his own. Um, so, but, you know, to answer your question, it... it no, it wasn't. I've been playing these stereotypes for a long time. I had to do, a, you know, obviously research a little more in depth onto, you know, what pedophilia mind sets mm -hmm. are like and, you know, people who do that and all that. But, you know, it was interesting because he's just a guy who's stuck in a situation and he's yeah. the most honest of all of them because he really just wants to live his life in peace with, you know, what, what he's pursuing, which is the love that he has for this girl. Mm -hmm. But he's stuck in a situation he can't get himself out of because of this fact that, you know, she's not of age. Right. And so they have all these things that they're blackmailing him and using it against him and, you know, and just throwing him into the pit of fire. And but you, that's so good that you said that because I, I, I can pinpoint who Nomar really is. He's really not about that life. No. He's not like a criminal or somebody. It's, it's sort of even shocking to see him going down this road of like having uh, to be the, the CI. I know that Nomar was placed in that position, but he's really not that type of character. No. He just seems like a good. Actually, the funny part about it is that he's he's. It pretty humorous to me. Like you're the the character that you play is actually pretty funny to me. Like I can't ever I can't even really take him seriously. You know what I mean? I get a lot of tweets like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just funny is lines. My thoughts on it. But also, isn't Nomar in love with somebody who's like niece that's like really really powerful? Yeah. Isn't so like the guy? Isn't the girl like his daughter? The, Ruiz's daughter. Ruiz's yeah. daughter. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So okay. My yeah. boss's daughter. So right, is that right, loyalty right. to Ruiz because of the daughter? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, keep you're it trying to the bust family, him. You know? Yeah, but you're trying to bust him. So, but you. Still, like, are you? Are you well, he's trying? being placed. He has to be. Yeah, I know he, he has to. to but is there any loyalty that you're like, man? Kind of in the back of your mind, your character, like, I don't really want to be doing this because I, I care about the girl, and I, you know, I kind of care about her father getting busted. Like, what it's? How's he playing this? Is he really trying to help the police just to save himself, just to get out, so they will leave him alone? Yeah, pretty much. I think he's, you know, he's he's trying to save his skin. You know, he's in it for that. But, you know, at the same time, he doesn't want to have to hurt Ruiz mm -hmm. because he cares for, you know, for him, obviously being the, you know, his uh, interest, love interest, his father and all that. But, you know, at the end of the day, a, a day again, he's just stuck in a situation he can't get himself out of because, you know, he's having to straddle his love for the girl versus, you know, now trying to save his own life based on, you know, the blackmailing and all that. Uh, but it's so interesting because Nomar is like Madison Square Garden, right? 
he just like he's uh, he's approachable to everybody mm -hmm. and he knows how to handle everybody mm -hmm. you know and he knows how to you know just embrace you know everything that comes his way in a sense um, so he's sensitive and he's naive that way you know but at the same time he's very powerful because you know he just allows anybody to come in mm. and your and your character is also very quick on his feet i liked how mm. when you when you got up and you finally went to the door to start eavesdropping with i i don't know i don't know the character's name but frankie g the actor oh yeah, yeah, yeah um when he when he and the other guy comes up to you it didn't take you no time but to be quick on your feet and just be like oh you know well because he was stabbed i have to keep my ears to find out what's going on you didn't even hesitate without yeah. even saying that and they and they totally picked up on it mm -hmm. and then they went outside so and that's that was, the street smarts of him, you yeah. know, because he's been in the street, so he's learned a few things, you yeah. know. And he told the other two guys that, you know, because of what happened, you guys are supposed, somebody's supposed to be at the <laughs> elevator, man, yeah. the elevator the whole time. So right. he, like, he's smart. He, he, he believably managed that whole scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, no more. No more has got some, some wit, some yeah. quick, okay. quick street wit about him. And he got the rid of the guys. That was believable because somebody does have to be at the elevator, and that's where the guys were supposed to be. Right. And then somebody need to be making sure that Ruiz was okay because he just got stabbed. So obviously mm -hmm. somebody – you know, wants to take him out, but then and somebody has to be keeping watch because you don't know what's going on, right? With uh, Tommy and, and you know, uh, and Ruiz, Ruiz in the room right. because now he told everybody to get out. I mean, he could really, if he doesn't have a gun or some way to protect himself because he's injured, Tommy could really strangle him with his bare hands. Okay, but here's a question for you. So, what would happen if Tommy would have come out and seen no more? What, what, what would have happened there? What do you think would have happened there? It, well, has, Tommy hasn't seen Omar before, has no, he? No, and Omar hasn't seen him either, so they, they don't know who each other is. But right. He obviously, you know, is aware of the fact that he's in there with, you know, the distributor or, you know, well, I don't think Tommy would to Ruiz. I don't think Tommy would react any kind of way because he knows that the, the guys are supposed to, you know, all the guys from Ruiz's camp are all around anyway. But I do feel that the way, the way, the direction that that uh, George Tillman Jr., the director, right. the, the direction, Brilliant. how it was, it was a very, it was a very, it was a chase between, between, it was a chase, it was a chase between, between Nomar, between Tommy, and then the, the uh, detective. Uh, and then the other detective, Medina, Medina, it was a three-way chase to see if they were going to collide or if they were going to yeah. all escape. So the way yeah. that, that shot, the way that it was shot, Brilliant. it does make me Couldn't wonder, it, it does make me wonder, hmm, now if they, if they are really to cross, uh, you know, pass, what will really happen, what go down right well you knew that tommy and medina weren't going to cross paths because that that would just yeah, be too mature yeah. too early as far as the storyline is concerned yeah. but i what i really think is brilliant is how uh, i was about to say Vinny. how <laughs> nomar had to be at the door and he was trying to listen mm -hmm. but the wire obviously is not going to be able to pick up everything and then you're it's in another room. room and so you're only getting like bits but, and pieces so that way that way when angela but he would was, listen to the audio tape and it would be reviewed she wouldn't be able to pick up that that was tommy but he was smart but nomar's character was smart because although he was eavesdropping he even took it a step further and he then he took the piece <laughs> yeah. of his jacket <laughs> and, and, then he, and, he, and he stuck right. it to the door right. yeah. so that they, so that they can, you know, inquire more information because he knew that his character knew that. Well, we can't hear anything, but why didn't you? And so he was crossing all of, he was crossing all of his all, right. eyes, all of his teeth down his all, all, all right. of his eyes. So. Right. Well, I I love that entire scene. I love how you play that entire scene. And like I agree with Bam, it was so uh, just all quick and just you know quick witted, and it was just so on your feet. But let me tell you something else that I picked up. It was just really small, but it was again. I think it was the how they did the directing. It was just it was so brilliant that it might be a seed planted. When Nomar walked away and the other guy took his place, he looked at, he gave him this look that almost could tell you something about what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. About, you foreshadowing. know. Foreshadowing. Yeah, it's foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. And it was just really small and it was really quick, but th that's just, a, you know, a quick thought that I had. Like, oh, I wonder if that's going to be something right there. Yeah, no, you're, you're right on the morning. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah. You, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Hit the nail right on the head, yeah. for sure. And, you know, the, one interesting fact that like, while we were shooting that, I uh, actually ended up eating about two boxes of pizza. I was gonna <laughs> ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, people have been tweeting me about it. You know, about eating the pizza and all that. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I it, you know, we shot it, you know, a few different times, and because you know, to be able to get the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I just had to keep eating pizza, pizza, pizza. So anyway, it's just an interesting fact there. But you know, so interesting about Nomar in, in that situation is that he actually um, um, is putting himself deeper, deeper into. Um, this life-threatening position that, you know, you just, 
you don't know what's going to happen because they just keep throwing him deeper into the fire. You right. know? And he's just going along with it. He's trying to save himself and at the same time defuse and be able to come out at the end of the day alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, it's interesting um, the way, you know, everything is revolving. And it's interesting because in the end, um, I think you're going to see a different side of Nomar. Wow. But I, mm-hmm. I just feel so bad for Nomar because it's yeah. like, like you were saying, it's just like he just wants to live his life. Granted, he's got some ways. He's got some <laughs> tendencies, you know, <laughs> about him. But I just feel bad for him. It's just the, the character that you play is a very likable character. You yeah, know what I'm right, saying? So right. I just, I'm like, you're throwing him into the fire. You know what I mean? Like right. you said. But I feel bad for Nomar. Um, just a couple of things. <laughs> Your face, though. He was just <laughs> I like, oh. Just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if he wasn't, like, in this situation, I feel like he could game Angela up somewhere, like, if Angela didn't know about him. Yes. Because sometimes he says a couple of things, and I feel like <laughs> she's, like, like thinks about it for like a millisecond, <laughs> and she's like, "No, yeah. I, guess, no I feel like she does that." I thought the same okay, exact thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, because no, yeah. she was like so alone, and she's like, you know, like, I know I can't. But then I'm like, I'm like, you know what? There's not that many episodes left. They can't do it. Right. Like they can't. Right. They can't go there. Right. No, it's not, it's not gonna right. be in the writing. Really? But I thought about it because sometimes you feel like she's so desperate to get her career going. It's like, look, if maybe if I just get, let him come and feel a little something, that'll motivate him to go do what I need him to do. She doesn't follow protocol anyway. Anyways, right. True. You yeah. know, so and she yeah. was really just messing anything. with Greg. She was really just messing with Greg, like to get inside information on that side. Right. Of the, you know, the whole wow. thing operating. You know, so she's just like mm. really like what a toss up. Uh, well, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> she's had a toss up. I don't know for about a toss up, but dang, you heard it on the After Buzz TV. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, the toss up. Um, I want to talk about. Uh, something that we we mentioned last week really quickly, which is something that was part of my prediction, and it looks like it's coming to fruition, is Sean and Kanan. (sighs) Now, Sean and Kanan, we saw that in the beginning episode. We saw Kanan in the cell with uh, his cellmate beating him at chess. Hilarious. Then stringing him up. Of course, 50 got to make himself look all rough and tumble. <laughs> you know, 50 had to do it hemmed up and then told him to go collect it and get ready yeah, for the next game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you thought he was going to snap his neck. I'm like, well, dang. That must be like normal. <laughs> the guy gets mad. Anyway, but, but so. Isn't that interesting, though, really quickly how his power transferred from the streets into the cell? Right, of course. It's, it just says everything about him. Yeah, most does, definitely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So yeah. then he meets with his son, recognizes his son, has his nice suit on, and he's planting those seeds. Seeds yep. that was obvious and you know evident that he mentioned before about him just being the driver, and now he's just saying, "Take what's yours." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. take mm-hmm. what's like yours. Like it's almost kind of like you're the heir apparent yeah. to that empire. Like Ghost and Tommy were. Like, I'm not supposed to be locked up. I'm supposed to be the one on the street running things. And those two guys are supposed to be working for me. And That's then right. the next thing to come along would be you to take over yeah. and still be the boss. So he's trying to get his mind right. And it looks like if he doesn't, if Sean makes the wrong move, that Sean is going to end up in a ditch somewhere. But Ghost is, might be getting, I mean, not Ghost, Kanan might be getting out soon. Mm-hmm. He is. I, well, I mean, year. obviously, for season two, he's right. going to. Yeah. So that yeah. is going to be really interesting. Yes. You know, he didn't mention that to Sean, did he? You know, he did. That because they know. Way, er- way earlier than he was supposed yes, to. Yes, they know that he's supposed to be getting out earlier or whatever. Of course, things have changed. But, of course, the transfer of power yes. is going to want to be, is going to start shift being shipped. Right. Well, yeah. th- and that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a huge problem. Because Ghost and Tommy have paid their dues in the street, and they're nobody's flunky anymore. Right. Unless it's on, like, a level of, like, Lobos or something. You know, somebody that's you know on their level is not they're gonna just have to make him a partner or i don't know how that's gonna work or that's gonna be very interesting to see how that goes but i really feel like kane is gonna try to make sean his partner and take over with his son hmm. that's what i feel that's on the I prediction feel side like he but feels like he's so that strong i don't feel like kane even feels like sean is that strong of a well he has he's, he's, he's planting, he's planting. Yeah, he yeah, knows he's, he's not that strong yeah yeah, yeah. He, he's just a he's method he's just a yeah. means yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Keenan is the mind behind it. Yeah, he's the yeah. mind, and he has to get his son's mind ready for when for he, he comes to take over, the that the son's not all sympathetic, like, well, these guys are cool, and they take care <laughs> right. of me, bro. Dad, <laughs> right. Dad, they raise me. Dad, what are you doing? Like, you know, right. he doesn't right. want him that. He wants him to have the more the manly street mentality. Yeah. So he's getting his mind ready for that, and that just goes to show you how smart Kanan is. That it's not like, man, right. you're supposed to be running this. He's not, he's not coming at him right. aggressively. Yeah. He's... 
He's in tune with the streets. Yes. yes. Yeah, he yeah. has everything under his yeah. control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so well, go ahead. I want to ask you really quickly, what was what was your what was the casting process like for you um, getting this role for um, for power? Ah, yes. And working with Fifty Cent and all the great directors and you know the cast. What was the process like for you? Oh, it's been a blessing working with Fifty Man. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. I love him to death. Follow his career. He's such an inspiring person, left and right, um, in all kinds of different ways. Um, first time I met him, actually, he just gave me a hug. Mm-hmm. You know, right off the bat. Yeah, that's just the type of person he is. Very genuine. You know, humble. Uh, he's got people all over him, you know, all the time asking him for things and all that. And he's just giving, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so, you know, for me to be a part of his show, um, such a privilege, you know, I was honored. Um, the casting process about how I got it, um, I was actually um, asked to be self-taped uh, for the crow of Julio mm-hmm. originally. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was... Uh, Which is Tommy's right-hand man. Right. He was part of that organization, yeah. yeah. Played by J.R. Ramirez, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, I auditioned for that role first. And then that got me to call in for uh, Luis's character. Hmm. Yeah, so I went through the process of that and then called back for that. And then um, doing that, um, they auditioned me for Nomar as well. Wow. So, you know, it was a few different steps, you know, about, I want to say a few different weeks. Mm-hmm. About three weeks or so, almost a month. Okay. And then uh, and then they called me and they said, I got Nomar. So. Wow. Sweet. But did that afford you the opportunity to research their different types of characters and come in, pres- you know, respectively yeah. so? Yeah, absolutely. Audition? Yeah, I had to kind of, you know, retransform yeah. myself for yeah, each different yeah. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I, I even felt like I related to Nomar a little bit more. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, in the right won't way, go as right to why, way. but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I auditioned for all three roles, and then wow. I got Nomar. Yeah. Well, Nomar is perfect for you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yes, I'm glad you Thank got that you. role. Is with with your ethnic with your ethnic background, you being from Brazil. Uh-huh. Um, What's your take on always being cast for Latino, Hispanic, you know, those type of uh, type, those type of roles when you're you're not even that? Real quick, before you answer that, are you from Brazil or are you just Brazilian? Yeah, no, I'm from Brazil. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. I just wanted yeah. to get that straight. Okay. Yeah, born in the <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I love it. I embrace the fact that, you know, um, uh, I've been able to... Uh, emulate my stereotype you mm-hmm. know we all get stereotyped and there's nothing you can do about it you know mm-hmm. <laughs> right. um so but you know like denzel said denzel washington you know you got to use what you can to be able to get in and then once you're in then you can show them you can change but you got to have something to get in you know and so um i use the latino a lot to my advantage you know um about 99 percent of the things i've done have been stereotyped within the Latino market, you know, being a Latino gangster to some kind or, or another. So uh, even the Latino lover and all that. So um, um, I've embraced that, you know, and I, I, I like it. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity here for a Latino community, you know, to be able to unite ourselves. We're, you know, the number one uh, ticket buyers in the whole country, but we're still divided in a sense oh, wow. because of, you know, the different... Um, and demographics within our own community, you, you know, you get yeah. separated into like we're Mexicans, you know, we're yes. Colombians, and then we don't associate Cubans and Puerto Ricans stay over here. And so there's a division in that sense, but we're a strong community. Mm-hmm. And so I think being able to be diverse and being able to show, you know, that I can be everything and anything and be at everything at the same time, it's just an opportunity for me to be able to unite our community and say, hey, you know, we can be one. You know, let's not get caught up in, you know, these little demographic type of things and let's just be Latinos, you know, right. and yeah. opened up, up doors for for us to be able to do more things. You know, in our days you, you see that happening, you know, you got more Latino producers, directors, writers <coughs> taking control, you know, and being able to open up doors and inspire other people as an artist for, who are Latinos to be able to come up and do the same, you know. So just you, as f- before you go Pam, just to make just to make a comment that to shout out to all the casting directors out there. This guy can actually play you can play an African American. You could play someone that's Middle Eastern. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Latino. You you have a very diverse look, and a lot of people don't have. You know, if you're black, some people can just play black. You know, they can't play. In right. they, you know, if you're Latino, some Latinos just really look Latino. Right. Some Italians just really look Italian. Like. Everybody as an actor doesn't have that diverse look, and that's, you know, an added quality for you as far as getting more work. So, Well, you know, I, I want to just say something about that because, you know, that is all a part of the process of what I call, you know, um, 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 transforming myself for, you know, each role. Mm-hmm. And it's funny you say that because I'm actually really light skin. Really? I wow. am. I tan myself. 
Oh, wow. you look lighter on, on, on camera. You look a little lighter. On the, I do. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. even lighter than that. Wow. Really? I am. <laughs> and my hair is a lot different. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I keep my hair. And now, you know, with the stereotypes, and I'm doing another film right now, so I have to keep it, you know, the way it is right now and the cut and all that. But, you know, my hair just grows out, and it's just this huge, big afro. <laughs> right. Wow. So I can completely be, like, completely what you don't see right now. So, you know, it's a part of embracing, again, the mm -hmm. fact that I get stereotyped as this, and this is what is strong for me, you know, and this is what works for me within the Latino uh, stereotype is the Latino gangster and so I, I embrace that mm -hmm. and then I, I, I transform myself to be uh, more approachable or more um, how do I say uh, um, more more believable mm -hmm. in that you know so mm -hmm. I do everything that I can to be able to stay within that image that people see within that box so I can you know continue to do what I'm doing right wow. you, you mentioned that you're doing another film it's called beautiful and twisted with Rob Lowe tell us about that that's right yeah mm -hmm. it's a uh, uh, Sony picture is going out the uh, lifetime um, it's uh, based on the life of Ben Novak jr. Mm -hmm. the era of Fontana blue Fontana blue Miami Beach Hotel fortunes um, based on the true story you know and how he was brutally murdered and it like shook the elites of the city of Miami and mm -hmm. so I'm doing that just started uh, uh, working on a set actually today mm -hmm. um, just came from the set and um, Congrats. yeah yes. thank you thank you so much um, and you know I'm just honored to be on it you know and working hard and uh, working with Paz Vega too mm -hmm. and got to meet her today and uh, she's so sweet um, Hamki Madera who is doing a lot another great Latino uh, actor mm -hmm. Um, and you know, just working on that right now. So, yeah. and then our final question before we uh, go into predictions: sure. Will you return for season two? Um, I'm not allowed to discuss that right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Stay tuned. You'll find out. I hope we'll so. Certainly, we will, so. So. we will stay tuned. <laughs> now, this is yes. the part you obviously can't talk about. We have to go into predictions right now because <laughs> we'll discuss what's going to happen. Your After Buzz TV. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna do a shoot of what we did to Notori. So Notori was sat there. And we have to try to read her to see if we can get. Is that uh, is it warm? Warm? Yeah, like, I don't know. Face. I don't know. Okay, so uh, season one, Star's original series, Power, uh, week seven. Uh, Robin Ayers predictions go. I predict something is going down with Nomar. He is going to get found out. He's uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I'm feeling no more, but he's going to get found out somehow. Same. Next week? Same. <sighs> Something might unveil next week. Okay. <laughs> Bam Erickson, week seven predictions. Go. I just have a, a prediction in general. Somebody has to die. <laughs> Somebody has to die. Somebody has to die. I love that. And my my prediction, I know it's not you because you're listed as being all eight episodes, so I know it's not your character. That's not you're not supposed to go based on that. You're supposed to go based on the story. Let me finish. Cheater. I think I think Sean is a dead duck. I think he has to die. Why would you say Sean is a dead duck? I think he has to die. Wow. Well, that goes totally against my prediction. Go, that Erica, week seven. Sean is going to step up. First, he's going to go after Tasha and destroy that relationship with her husband. He's don't say talking about nothing. And, and he's not going to die. He's going to step up. Kane is going to come out with a vengeance because wow. his boy is dead. <laughs> Man, that's actually pretty that's good. Heavy. Man. That's heavy. Okay, well, well, my prediction is... <laughs> Uh, my prediction is that Ghost is somehow, some way, gonna get in uh, bed with Simon Stern, uh, this guy who's like this big nightclub investor, and Simon Stern is gonna find out about Ghost some kind of way. He's a very powerful guy, mm -hmm. but he seems like the kind of guy that probably has some street connections hmm. and might put some feelers out there to find out something about. But somebody it does have to die. You're you're right about that, Bam. That is just like, much. Well, I'm looking at him. He's like he just went deep. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's my all of my other predictions have been coming true so far. Okay. Holly stole the air, so she stole something. <laughs> they showed and, that. And, and, and Sean, saw that. And Sean, no, but I predicted it before when she went. I was like, she stole something. Just like I knew it, it right? Can and I, then and then the other thing was Sean being the next up and coming. Blah ahead. blah blah. You got something. Anyway, I but, predict that one of your predictions is gonna come true. Woo! It's me. Yes. Somebody's gonna me. die. <laughs> Somebody's gonna die. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, where can we find? Where can your fans find you, uh, Venetius? Now, the easiest way is go to my website, machadovenicius.com. M a c h a d o v i n i c i u s. Machadovenicius.com, and you'll find everything there. Any uh, social net? Oh, everything. All your social networks. Yeah, all my social networks is there. Yeah, awesome. Axel Venetius is for Twitter, Facebook. 
and uh, Instagram actor Vinicius Machado. So awesome. Yeah. Bam, uh, you can find me at uh, at Bam Erickson on all social media. Find me at Robin Ayers, A Y E R S, at Erica J Green. At Club Thaddeus, that's C L U B T H A D D E U S, and GQJedi.com. Until next time, after buzzers. Peace. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.